Hello everybody, and you might notice uh, I kind of stopped doing the whole thingy thing. I could keep walking back to the Crystal Lava to get stuff, but there's no point in doing that considering we have less than one million monies. Because everything is very, very expensive. Uh, yeah, let me just grab back our tools. Just to show off the kinds of things that I got. Chaos Blade, Frost Axe, and Crescent Axe Plus. Yes, that is 640,000. Even at 10% off, that was still expensive. We got a golden turnip, but we have an extra golden turnip in here somewhere. Here we go. And just generally a bunch of stuff that's been shipped yet, including we finally got Steelheart! Those of you who watched, uh, Moon Factory for a water and can only play through might understand how good Steel Heart is as an ability. And those of you who haven't seen the water, the Moon Factory for a water and can only uh, let's play, you should go back and watch that because it shows off how awesome an ability Steel Heart is. So what I figured that I'm going to do here is wait a couple of. Oh, yeah. They're doing work outside. Don't mind that. I have to record anyway. Uh, we're going to wait for this golden... I think it's pumpkin that I grabbed. This whatever giant golden crop to finish growing. Hello, cinnamon. Yeah. I'll wait for this uh, giant golden pumpkin to finish growing. Harvest it. Get Fuka to uh, praise me and all that. And, yeah. Yeah, get Fuka to praise me and say, it's like, oh yes, you did it. Now here's the recipe for a, a turnip heaven. I'm going to go and right. make that because nice. Dear Lord, 7,000 moon points with my discounts, by the way. <coughs> Sorry, I've been sneezing all morning. All right. Hi, Simon, you want to come on up? Yeah, it's okay, come on up. Hey, kitty. The 7,000 with my discounts is kind of a heck of a lot more than I can handle right now. Ugh, I want to sneeze. I need sneeze. All right. So now I'm pretty sure that we did all of the farm work, but I might as well go check up on the farms anyway. And yeah, between episodes, I was tempted to just farm uh, Gideon. Maybe I should have done that. Maybe I should do that now while I talk. Uh, recording this episode specifically on the third. The third. Well, Cinnamon, I hope you're comfy. Got your paw. Yeah, Cinnamon, you're not so uh, used to people uh, touching your paws, are you? Well, you know, when you go in for a uh, checkup at the uh, at the clinic, they, they're going to touch your paws. You understand that, right, Cinnamon? It, it's a health thing. They... Yes, and they touch your face. Yes, yes. They have you on file as being a bad kitty. You're not a very good kitty. You're not a good patient at the vet. Oh, God. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah. Still thinking about the potential move, but... Uh, as of... Next episode, it should be more determined. Yeah, by the time I record the next episode, which will be like in almost a week. <laughs> yeah. When I record the next episode, you know, next week, I should be able to determine um, if it's, if the move is going to happen or not. I should have all the information by then. 
Well, I've looked at the places, see what it's all like. All of that stuff. Know if the place is... Well, won't necessarily know if the place is good, but... Know about all this stuff. So, so far it looks like we're either looking at an apartment or a townhouse. And they both have perks. The apartment has, like its own pool and it's like well how often do I use the pool well the only pool nearby is would be like a day trip to try to go to it would be nice to just be able to you know go down seven or eight floors in the elevator and hit up the pool whenever I want to that would be nice as well as an exercise room which I probably won't use that much but yeah just being able to go down to the pool for free means I might just go down just to uh you know be in some water it's an apartment, not a hotel, so the pool's probably not that busy. Uh, yeah. Nice view, a bit private. Like, if somebody finds out what building I live in, they still don't know, like, the exact apartment. Whereas, nice. if I live in a house and someone finds out which building I live in, well, they know where I live. All right. So is that going for it, um... Yeah, living in, in a house, I mean, yeah, living in a house, you have a bit more privacy about things. Nice, nice. Like, you don't have to worry about, I don't know, getting woken up because the next door neighbor's alarm goes off. Yes, yes. So I'm pretty sure in the building I'm living in now, the bedrooms are right next to each other between apartments. I think, I'm not sure. So, uh, nice, yeah. Nice. Huh. 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 Uh, right. Nice. All right. Nice. Yes. And yeah, some people will point out that uh, potentially living with someone who I haven't gone to uh, be with in person that much might be a mistake. Uh, and like just committing that's like, yeah, we're going to live together for X amount of years. Some people see that as a mistake, but I don't know. Really? Also... I don't think that the uh, shield flowers will get giant, but I'll give them a few extra days. Nice. Nice. Now, every once in a while, it's just nice to uh, chop down all of this. Yes. Just get everything all nice and good, good, you know, you know? Also, strictly speaking, generally speaking, uh, I find out if a person is going to like me or not pretty darn fast. Sometimes as fast as uh, I say hello to them and then they uh, immediately insult me to my face. And that's... Gosh, still not getting over that game where someone was adamant that Wizards of the Coast made a mistake because the person themselves didn't understand the concept of zero. And, it's like... I don't know. It's like... Sometimes when a person is arguing, it's like, what do you, what do you plan on getting? Like, do you want me to not use the card? Do you want me to just nice. scoop the game and go, well, yeah, that's a stupid... Do you want me to go back in time and not put that card in my deck? Do you want me to go back in time, uh, slightly play... Because uh, it was like the whole like next turn with a person voice that they had a problem with it. Do you want me to go back in time, play a different land instead, do the exact same thing, then turn two, play this land, and now that I have one land, I... I do have less than two. I do have, well, it's not less than two, two or less. So now I'm allowed to play it and be fine. It's like. Nice. Nice. 
Before the rest of the table understood that zero is a number. Yeah, I just still, oh, gosh. Wish I'd been playing oh, Nullbrooch to uh, get the guy's reaction to discarding a hand of no cards. Nice. Oh yeah, wait for him to go to put his first card in the graveyard and go, you can't put that in the graveyard, you don't have a graveyard. Use his own same argument nice. against him. Nice. Since there's no cards in your graveyard, you don't have a graveyard, so you can't put that card in the graveyard. Gosh, I don't know why it low-key bugs me when a person, like, person's card is supposed to go nice. to exile and they just put it in the graveyard instead. It's like, no, that's supposed to be in exile. The person goes, oh, well, I don't have any recursion in my deck, so I'll just put it in my graveyard and it's the same thing. It's like, sure, if you literally have no way of returning stuff from your graveyard, like, taking nice. stuff out of your graveyard, period. One thing, that's, you know, poor deck design, like, I had the... Like, even if I'm not playing a recursion deck, I at least put in, like, Elixir of Immortality nice. in pretty much every single one of my decks. Just so I can potentially, you know, get stuff out of my graveyard in case one of my key cards gets put in there. I can still, you know, refresh it. Or if someone's playing mill, I can do that. Or it's just, you know, 3 mana gain 5 life. In addition to, you know, changing out my graveyard. Like... And it looks like for Mortality wouldn't get back that card that you have in Exile, so it's like... Yes, yes, yes. So, sure, fine. Assuming the person actually doesn't have any recursion, any way to remove cards from the graveyard, period. Which I'm already doubtful of. If this is like a creature card that got exiled, and it's supposed to be an Exile, but they put in their graveyard, and then later on in the game someone plays Living Death, the person, not remembering that the card is supposed to be an Exile, goes, Oh, cool! I get this thingy back! When, really, no, you don't. Because that's not supposed to be in the graveyard, but you put it there anyway, because according to you, uh, you having no recursion means that nobody can recur stuff from your graveyard. Or say later on, somebody goes like, Hi, I play Reanimate, take this card from your graveyard to put into play under my control. And it's pointed out, it's like, oh yeah, that one creature that you wanted? Yeah, no, that's not actually in the graveyard, that's in exile. It was just put in with the graveyard cards. It's like, it's not that much effort to put that one card sac sideways. However, on that note, nice, nice. there are people who, like, use, like, the same spot. So they put all of, like, their all graveyard right. cards and their exile cards, like, in the same spot. Because they don't have room for, like, two zones. Two yes, piles of cards, yes. they put them all in the same pile. But they have the yes. exile card sideways and the graveyard cards, like, vertical. Which isn't that much of an issue. Except that they put, like, XL cards on top of Graveyard, and then Graveyard t cards on top of the XL, so it's, like, one big stack where some of the cards are sideways and some are vertical. It's, like, yes. you can at least put the XL cards on the bottom or something, instead of putting, instead of just having, you know, a mishmash stack, which, once again, you might see and go, oh, I should straighten out my Graveyard. Bro, bro, bro. Hey, I thought this card was exiled, but it's clearly in my graveyard now. I'm going to recur it, and it's obviously in my graveyard, because that's where I put it. Like, for me, if I don't have the room for, you know, two piles of cards, I at least put all the exiled cards sideways below the graveyard, like at the bottom of the pile, to, you know, not have that confusion where it's like, oh, which of those cards are actually in your graveyard and which are in exile? Because been playing mostly on webcam lately. It's hard to see what cards people have sometimes. Especially if somebody has a really jank setup. Just like, gosh, I once played with the guy whose setup was, oh yeah, I have my webcam like turned to face my TV that's like, you know, seven or eight feet away from the webcam so you can barely see it. And it, the webcam is at an angle, slightly. And I just have, like, Moxfield playing on my TV way over there. So you can kind of see how much stuff I have, but there's no way you can tell what I have out. And the guy was playing, like, all silver bordered cards. Effective. Basically all silver bordered cards, so you... Can make even less sense out of what's being played. And it's like, gosh, that was annoying. And I don't know exactly what... My playback uh, crashed. 
I don't know exactly what it is, but people who play CDH, uh, comparative Elder Dragon Highlander, comparative VDH, comparative Commander, tend to have the best setups. And it's just something I've noticed. Like, if people only play low power, their setups are usually, you know, low effort. But if someone has all the time... But if someone has spent the time and effort to make a good deck and get used to it and play that a lot... Um... Game Capture HD is already running. Hold on a second. Uh, da -da 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 -da, game Capture HD. No. Game Capture HD is indeed not running. Here we go, now it's on. Yes! All right. Huh. Yeah. Nice. I don't... Yeah, that's why I'm usually right. low-key hesitant to play with people. It's like, oh yeah, I got a pre-con, let's play a game. And like some people have gone to know is like, oh yeah, this person has a really weird setup. It's one thing to just like, you know, have a low quality webcam filming your board from like top down perspective. And a lot of people have janky setups that do, you know, webcam from top down perspective, and that's fine. You can more or less see what's going on. Hey, Chandra. Uh, but some people's cameras are like, oh yeah, this is like three feet away. It's at an angle. You can kind of see like my, it's from behind my shoulder. So you can see like half my body as I'm playing. It's like, yeah, no, this is the best way I could do it. It's like, that is like such poor quality. And the person's like, well, what do you want me to do? It's either this or I just don't play at all. It's like, I am sure that you could do better. Like you can at least put the camera closer. Like, I got a specialty webcam that's supposed to be super high quality for doing recording. Nice. And I use right. that, but of course not everyone can spend, what, 60 bucks on a webcam? But it's like, nice. people usually have phones that have a decent camera. You can spend five bucks on a selfie stick. Or at least, what? Like, you can get some sort of a tripod. Get a, sel yeah, get a selfie stick and some duct tape. That, but, nice, nice. but that's my water. Oh, I thought it was empty. Was Is it empty? This one's almost empty. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll go to this one. I'll get you another one. Stay hydrated, everyone. Yeah, you can spend like five bucks, maybe, get a selfie stick, then just spend a couple of dollars, whatever. Like, you don't have to spend like a lot of money, but you can spend a bit of money, get a half decent setup, selfie stick, duct tape, put your phone in. And then spend the time when you're not playing a game, making sure that your phone works with the uh, Discord or a spell table or whatever. I can record myself using my 3DS. It'll be funny because it'll look like a Samsung. Hey, I have been tempted in the past to record uh, games of Commander. So I can easily just screen capture the uh, spell table and go with that. And then either upload all the footage as it is, or trim it down, or what have you. You know, so next time I play Commander at the Standing Death, yeah. Next time I play some Commander, I'll see if the people are up for a nice recorded game. Actually, let's go. Yeah, Calamity's Edge. Let's fight. Get a on. Cinnamon is a sleepy cat. Let's fight Gideon. Ugh. 
And the games themselves, I don't know. Sometimes you want to get a nice game, and what you really want to do is just chat with the people you're playing with, have some fun, whatever. Sometimes you want to get in a game, and you just want to play a game. You want to get it done, you just want to go through with it, and you just want it to be over. And people don't tend to say uh, what type of game they want to do before they play it. They just go in and it's like, oh yeah, I'm running a mid deck. Which, by the way, doesn't say much about the deck because pretty much no everyone thinks place. that their deck is mid. <laughs> it's true! It's like, oh yeah, all I'm running is like, you know, Demonic Tutor, Demonic Consultation, Thassis. You're supposed, or... You're supposed to be family friendly for this playthrough, Claire. What? <laughs> I said that everybody thinks that the deck is mid. I thought you said big. Also, I said deck. Uh. Like, commander decks? Uh. They're generally all the same size, Chandra. I think they're very much adequate. Long Time for your checkup. Unless you, you know, triple sleeve the deck or something, which I did for a little while. That was... That was a lot of stuff. Oh gosh, some people playing Commander, it's like, oh, I can't shuffle a hundred cards. So they take like 10 minutes to shuffle the deck and it's like, I don't know what you want from me. It's like, bleh. Yeah, sometimes people will take so long on their turn and the turn is, you know, untap, draw a card, past the turn. That's what the turn winds up being. They don't do anything for the turn, and it still somehow takes multiple minutes to go through for no particular reason. I don't... Yeah, I think the worst of it was the time that... Uh... Yeah. Person... Like, player A had said, oh, I have to leave in a few minutes, but I'll wait till my turn and then I'll scoop. Uh, just so I'm not, you know, leaving on someone else's turn, which is normally considered rude. Person B, whose turn it was, right before person A, a player A, whatever, says, okay. And they have, like, a board full of creatures. They were going to attack uh, player A and they were going to attack me, but they couldn't kill both of us. They could only kill one of us with their attacks. And they were kind of, like, waffling between who to kill. And then player A says that they're going to leave the game on their turn because they have to go in a few minutes. So player B goes, okay. And then they just sit there. They just sit there. They don't like play spells. They don't like talk it out, whatever. They just sit there. Maybe like touch some of their cards as if they're trying to decide what to attack. They just kind of sit there. And I checked the time. They sat there for five solid minutes. Not playing anything, not doing anything, they just sat there. Then player A went, okay, I have to go now. So the player A disconnects and player B goes, okay, cool, go to combat swing, clear. Like. And then I say, it's like, oh yeah, you slow rolled that. Like, if that person had left, like, would you still be waffling about who to attack? Like, it's like, oh, I was trying to make up my mind of what to do. It's like, dude. You sat for literally five minutes. And you went, ugh. And, like, that was, that, that was all, like, that was it. Like, I was dead because, like, the, uh, good thing to do for that situation would be for player B to then go, oh, player A, you're planning on leaving anyway? Okay, I'll attack you so you have an excuse to be out of this game. Really, what? Really, player A should not have said that they were going to leave at all. Let the attack happen, and then on their turn, they go and scoop. But then, hearing that, player B should be like, Okay, player A, I'll attack you. The uh, jerk thing to do would be to just go, It's like, oh, well, player A is leaving. I'll attack Clay with everything. What they did was they literally just sat there, waited out the timer for the other player to leave, and then went, Well, oh, you're you gone. Play. It's like, well, since you're gone, I'm going to attack... I'm going to attack the other person now and effectively get two kills in when I couldn't do that already. Yay, me! Because, like, I don't know if they often play with people who say that they're going to scoop and the per 
So then the person goes, okay, I'll attack the other person. And the, the player goes, actually, I'm not good. Actually, I'll kill you, and then the game will be over, and I don't have to scoop. Yay! It's like people are lying about if they're scooping or not kind of stuff. Like, I don't know, because you always have to keep in mind the kind of people that people play with. Because you never know what people have gotten used to. I played as someone who made his own EDH server. Discord server. Who him and his friend group always, 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 always play with at least 30 counter spells in the deck. They always play blue and they always put in at least 30 counter spells and that's their mid power deck. Like 30 some lands, 30 counter spells, and 30 cards of whatever else helps finish the deck. And that's it. And that's what they consider mid is. But not only that though, because I played against him and a friend once in a three person game. One of them was like, ha, I'll put out my game winning combo piece. And the other player was like, cool. And then I go to counter it, and the person who didn't play the card, like, counters my counter spell. Because they want their friend to win. They don't care if they win or if their friend wins, as long as I don't win. And it's like, well, it's one thing to play against 30 counter spells. But in like a three person game, you think the 30 counter spells is more like 15, because I split between the two. But no, I'm actually playing against 60 counter spells. I have 60 spells in my deck. Like. Like, they can literally counter spell everything I cast for the entire game. Seed is the fruit of my And that's not fair. Like, on a base level. It but of course, you complain about anything, and everybody says, oh, well, you're the problem, because, uh, you know, the person playing 30 counter spells was it complaining that they were playing 30 counter spells. Like, no, of course they weren't, because they're the ones doing it. It's the person that they're doing stuff to that complains, and everybody hates the person who complains, but nobody wants to, you know, stop the complaining by getting rid of the source of, like, the reason why they're complaining. They just want to get rid of the person who complains. This is the person who, by the way, wound up banning me from the server because he decided that I wasn't shuffling what, like, my deck properly. Because I have a 225 card modern deck. It's a Battle of Wits. Uh, 5 mana enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep if you have 200 more cards in your library, you win the game. So 225 card modern deck. And... Game one, he was fine with how I shuffled. But since I won with Battle of Wits game one, because I got lucky and, you know, had it, uh, and got it out and got an upkeep before, it, you know, he won. Uh, but since I won with Battle of Wits, game two, he was uh, very, very, very picky about how I was shuffling my deck, because I can't shuffle the full 225. So I shuffle one half, shuffle the other half, uh, like, pile them together, you know, take some cards, put them in the middle, take some cards, put them in the middle, blah, 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 all the way back up, and then do a little bit of shuffling on the big pile in the middle. But he was complaining the entire time I did that because, you know, the first time I won the game, so game two, he decided to complain and complain and complain about it. And it's like, no, no like, I've talked to, I showed this to a judge, and judge has always been fine about how I shuffle this. Well, and then he says... If we were playing in person, I would insist on touching every card in your deck so I could know if they were double-sleeved. Because, apparently, to his mind's eye, the Wait, only way I was able to get Battle of Wits, not from, you know, drawing into it for... Not, like, drawing into it, not getting lucky, is because I double-sleeved the Battle of Wits so while shuffling I could feel which card it was and shuffle that up to the top. Yes. That was his argument. That I had specifically double sleeved the Battle of Wits cards. It's like, I can show you the Battle of Wits cards and you can see that they are not double sleeved. Oh, no, no, no. I'd have to touch them to know for sure. It's like, just that says, like, if we were playing in person, I would insist on touching every card in your deck to make sure they're not double sleeved. If we were playing in person, I would call a judge on you for that statement. Right, he's the owner of the server, so he just banned me from the server. Stop. 
And that wasn't even the end of it, though, because I started playing Magic on a different server instead. And this guy kept going to the server, you know, it's, it's like, oh, LFG, looking for games. Uh, and then he'd get, like, some people interested in the game, and he would tell them, like, hey, can we go to play on my server? I'll send you an invite to my server, we can play on there instead. So he would steal people from other servers to bring to his server so he can be in charge and give all the rules. Also, yes, I am grinding this like boss because I wanted to drop bread. something. Yeah. So I found the sniffles. I don't know why I'm kind of under the weather today. But yeah, I'll, after I do this episode, just gotta pack up and get ready to go and leave and go to Animathon this weekend. Yay! Gosh, looking at houses and then going to Animathon. That'll be fun. See, I, I talked to him on that uh, second server and it's like, hey, this guy, who I know is a scumbag for X, Y, Z reasons, is also trying to, like, like recruit people from this server to bring them onto his own server. Seed is the fruit of my labor. Yeah, speaking of scumbag players, I was in, uh... Yeah, I was in a tournament with prizes once on one server and this guy decided that he was going to cheat. Know your place. Yeah, two of us were playing somewhat artifact based decks. My CDH deck is primarily artifact. Someone else was using a lot of mana rocks. And the third guy, in one particular game, he somehow turn one, get a card that says, yeah, uh, Players can't activate artifacts. Which is a card that you sometimes see in CDH, not that often. Because it's just a stacks piece, and unless you're running stacks, you don't run stacks, you know, obviously. But he got that out in one game, and that was the one game that he won, because it was like he got like a really good set of draw, but then every single other game, because we played uh first person to three wins when someone else had already gone three, so the rest of us were playing for second. So you're playing a lot of games together. And every single other game, as we're shuffling up before beginning, one of the mods who was watching told the guy, it's like, hey, make sure to shuffle properly. And made him, you know, shuffle well. Because we're all shuffling on camera, of course. But the way he was shuffling, it was plain to see if you're watching it. But the top cards didn't get, like, shuffled into the deck. So it'd be the same, like, you know, ten or so cards on top. And he would do this every single game, and the one time he wasn't, you know, told, hey, shuffle properly, was the one time he'd gone out, you know, land, ramp, ramp, yeah, no one can use artifacts, and then turn to, like, land ramp win the game kind of thing the one time when he wasn't caught at one point Amad actually told him it's like yeah you're not shuffling properly because the same couple of cards stay on top the guy has the nerve to say yeah that's the point Come on. We've got investigating to do. and I wish I had been I wish that someone had been recording this just to get that like the guy really should have been like DQ'd like He's, it's not just that he sucks at shuffling, it's that he's admitting to cheating. And he didn't get, I should have called for him to get DQ. He's like, um, hey, excuse me. That's a disqualification if I've ever heard one. Because, like, he admitted to that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Is this just going to be more magic stories? Sure. How about that server I went on with the... Where I shared my uh, deck list for my artifact deck, you know, that CDH one that was. I was playing at that CDH tournament. Seed is the fruit of my I think out of like 60 plus people who participated in the CDH tournament, I got like fourth. Almost got there, but person got a lucky draw at one game and I didn't. Know your place. Um. I have like, you know, 60 plus people playing CEDH. I did top four, so 
pretty good, right? Yeah, I shared the deck list on a uh, with the server I was on. A uh, server I just just joined, and the moderators started yelling at me that it was like pre-car level, like a four, on a scale of one to ten. It was like a four. Um, so. And the sole reason that they had for screaming at me that it was a four was because they had, quote, no possible way to deal with counter spells, unquote. And it's like, yes, the deck does have ways to deal with counter spells. Can I, so, can I win a turn when someone has ten free counter spells that they want to use on me all at once? Actually, quite potentially, if it's just one person doing them. My commander can stop counter spells. My commander can stop what ninety nine percent of the game's counter spells, and the other one percent don't get played in CDH because they're creature based, and those ones aren't the most effective counter spells. And it's like, yeah, apparently there is a number, not quite a few, but there are a number of CDH or high level decks or mid level decks, you know, all above power level four that also don't have counter spells or things to make the spells uncounterable. And it's, gosh, I wish I had just been calm about it and instead of saying, like, hey, this is my CDH deck, said, hey, this is my, my like, favorite deck. Where would you read at? Well, I'd say four. I get them to like put out in writing that the deck is power level four. And I go, cool, let's play a power level four game. Precon level? Sure, let's play this against a couple of precons. And I keep doing that until people complain to who the mods and I you know, show the screenshot that I take of multiple mods telling me that that is precon level. Seed is the fruit of my labor. And when people complain, I show them the screenshot. I'm like, nope, these these seven mods all said that this is a pre-con level deck, so I'm playing this against pre-cons. If you don't like it, complain to these seven mods. And then, of course, I get banned from the server anyway for being a smart aleck no, about no. it, but it's like, hey, if the mods say that the deck is pre-con level, I'll play it against pre-cons and wipe the floor with them, because this is definitely not a pre-con level deck. But the mods insisted. Swing by the forge whenever you please. Why is he just not dropping anything? <sighs> oh god. God, what other stories do I have? Oh yeah, there's that like child who is playing who is adamant that his deck was mid level when it was actually like high level because his entire deck was get out the commander, get out this one creature that I can definitely tutor for. It's like if I it's like if he can get enough mana in any one of, like, what, six or seven cards in his deck? Because, like, you know, five of them will tutor for the six. Uh... Uh, yeah, then he just wins the game. And, like, that's it. And that's... His entire deck is a two-card combo where his commander is one part of the combo. And he was adamant that it was mid power. It's like, it's one thing if you want to play a deck that relies on a two card combo to win. It's, you know, effectively he only has to find one card. Because it's his commander and one card. And that's the whole combo. It's like, it's fine if you want to play a deck like that. But that's not mid power. Two card combos aren't really mid power. And I'm one to say that when I run a deck that's all about a two-card combo with Laboratory Maniac. If you draw a card and your library is empty, instead of losing the game, you win the game. Time for your or no, instead out. of drawing, you win the game. Whatever. And I know that I run a deck based around that, but I don't, you know... Yeah. Whatever. Get out that, get out something to go with that, and then a win. 
eventually, while also giving everyone a whole bunch of cards to potentially deal with any part of the combo. As opposed to running all of the, uh, running all of the tutors to try to find the pieces, I just try to draw into what I need. Simple as that. Oh. Yeah, I like running. Sorry. I like running weird cards in decks, and like sometimes some weird card has managed to like save my game. It's like, oh yeah, I run this weird card, but it's like exile the top card of your library, and like prevent the next one damage to be dealt to you. And I've managed to like protect myself from dying because of that. Because someone has an infinite damage combo on the field where they have to deal damage to continue the combo. It's like, well. I prevent that damage. What do you do now? I think I made a deck once with as many different... If a source would deal damage to you, prevent one of that damage effects that I could. I'm going to rebuild that. So it's like... Someone swings me with a 5-5. Five five. I go, cool, I won't block. I'll take zero. Okay, I put force field in. If an uh, unblocked uh, creature would deal damage to you, it only deals one damage. Plus, have a... Something out that prevents one damage. See if those two stack, and I just go, Cool, I'll take nothing. Thank you. I'm currently part of what? Four EDH servers? Oh god. For the record, don't go to play EDH to play EDH. It is a super toxic community. And some people are like, oh yeah, but the people are always nice to me. It's like, really? I remember once a uh, moderator decided to, decided to kick me from the server uh, just for the fun of it. It's like, oh yeah, I kick people when the kicking is good. He started to kick me from the server while I was in a game. So I told everyone in the server, like, in that game, Oh, hey, I've been kicked. Can we switch to, like, the, uh, the audio of, like, the software we're using so I could still, you know, play this game with you? Nobody cared. To them, it was just, Oh, one of my opponents is out of the game. This makes it easier for me to win. And the reason why the guy kicked me from the server was because uh, if you want to play a game on the server, you have to, like, ping, like, the LFG roll. No, no, you have to set yourself as active on the LFG roll so people can ping LFG and see, it's like, oh, there's three people on the LFG roll. I can play with these three. So you have to manually add yourself when you want to play a game and manually unadd yourself when you've got a game. Which is a stupid t system that sucks. <laughs> and it's very, very, very often that people forget to do it. It's like, oh, there's three people on the LFG. Cool, we get a game. And no, all three of them are already in games. So they just forgot. Three different games, by the way. And they'd all forgotten to uh, remove themselves. That's normal. That's there's That happens all the time. To learn. It could have been a way better system where people just on an LFG roll. Someone does like, hey, let's get a game in. At LFG, and then whoever's not in a game who wants to be in a game at the time can just see, get the ping, and go, hey, cool, let's play, boom, 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 whatever, instead of adding yourself and removing yourself. And so, Marta's all like, hey, you two, it's like me and someone else who is also in my game with me, you two didn't remove yourselves from the LFG role. And it's like, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> And it's like, so what? Like, this happens all the time. Why are you getting on us, on specifically us just now? It's because the mod is just only on just then. And I decided to do some mod stuff. I got kicked from the server. Other guy, you know, the other person didn't. And yeah. It's overall just a toxic place. I got reported to a mod because apparently my deck was high power because it ran around like 
A mana crypt, ooh, which is effectively just a Sol Ring. Uh, Sol Ring is a card that's played in like practically every commander deck. Mana crypt is supposed to be like a thousand times better when it's like zero mana instead of one mana. And it, mana crypt, the better help. one, can hurt you every turn. <laughs> And it's supposed to be like a thousand times better. Just running that in the deck is enough to make the deck high power. Unless a mod has seen your deck list and decides to allow you to run it in your mid deck. It's like, oh my gosh, you have such, what, authority issues? Such a need to micromanage people? It's only specifically because one player was like, OMG, mana creep, did a mod say you could do that? I don't think a mod said you could run that card. I'm going to report you. For you two mods, you shouldn't run mana crypt. This is big. You shouldn't run mana crypt. And apparently poured me to the mods for it because you can't just let people play the game. I don't think I even won that game. I don't know. It was years ago. So and it's like... Yeah, I run that in the deck alongside the sawing because I'm running a bunch of really big expensive creatures and I need as much mana as I can get my hands on. I mean, no I just reanimate the creatures, whatever, but still, having that extra mana is useful because my mana base otherwise sucks. But yeah, some random person decided to point me to a mod, and a mod is all like, Oh, I have to give you the okay to, uh, to play that. I have to give you the okay. It's my... It's, it's like... It's up to me that if you get to play your deck or not. Give me the deck list right now so I can decide if you can play it or not. It's like I don't have a deck list written down or anything because I, you know, collected all these cards, put them together. I don't have it written down. Well, go write it down and give it to me. So it's like, okay, well, here's the cards one time. No, go to like this website you've never heard of, sign up for an account, and. Put the deck list on there, then link it to me. You have- I'll give you five minutes to do that. It's like, I'm not going to make an account on a website I've never heard of just to appease your ego. Oh, well then I'm going to ban you from this server if you don't do that. It's like... So yeah. Mods of and I heard that it's actually got worse ever since I left, and they're making people people pay a subscription fee in order to actually do the LFG. So it's like, whenever I hear that person is like, Yeah, I used to play EDH, it's, I just say, Well, I feel so bad for you. There's that. It's just, that's just a toxic place, and people might say, Oh, well, it's better now. It's like, No. It really... I really doubt that. And apparently PlayDH is actually, like, endorsed or supported by Wizards of the Coast. Because Wizards of the Coast bought whatever website it was that they then turned into Spell Table. And on, like, the homepage they say, Hey, if you want to get in Webcam Games the Commander, go to the PlayDH Discord server. It's like Wizards of the Coast is encouraging people to go to this toxic server. A toxic server that makes people, you know, pay to play the game, and I really doubt that that money is going to Wizards of the Coast. It's going to help it run as a server. So, God. Let's see, other bad servers. There's this one guy who definitely didn't know what he was doing when it came to running a server. Because, uh... Yeah, one day I... You know, come in, whatever, I check it out. See, there's an announcement that says, Oh, this so-and-so person... Or was this like, Hey, for that tournament that we're going to have in... How for much time from now... Uh, now we have prize support because of this person. Like, Mr. Johnson is giving us prize support. Also, Mr. Johnson is our newest mod! So it's like, okay, well, Mr. Johnson paid his way into being a mod because he's, you know, paying for the prize support for a tournament. And you made him a mod yourself. in the same announcement. Like, it's very obvious that this person paid his way in. I didn't mention that right away. Uh, you can't, I can't, you know, I couldn't send a message in the announcement channel itself. So I went to general and I said, it's like, hey, 
Isn't this Mr. Johnson person like that player that we had that four hour commander game with like last week? I don't remember who I'd had the game with, but I believe that Mr. Johnson is one of them. There are two other people, but I don't know who, so I just said that in there. I didn't like at anyone. But it's like, hey, isn't Mr. Johnson the person that we had that four hour commander game with last week? Uh my message immediately gets deleted, I get muted on on there, and the owner of the server messages me all within a span of like 15 seconds. Like immediately my message is deleted and I get muted and then the person sends me a message. Um, saying it's like, oh well, I don't like your attitude. It's like, well, it's like the mods have been having an issue with your attitude problem for a while now, uh, but it's only when Mr. Johnson came in did the mods actually decide that they had an, a problem with your attitude? Blah, blah, blah. Wait, I'm giving you two strikes. On the three strikes system, I'm giving you two strikes. Because uh, apparently, me saying, hey, didn't I have a four-hour game with him, was worthy of a strike. One-third of a ban from the survey was just that. Was just me saying, hey, I was in a game with him. Hey, I was in a long commander game with him. Was worthy of, you know, a third of a ban. And because Mr. Johnson had an issue with me during the game, he bribed his way into being a mod on the server so he could tell the other mods, Hey, Claire's a bad person and I, and you should uh, obey me because if you don't, uh, you won't get prize support for your tournament. So the mod's like, oh yeah, sure, we'll throw this person under the bus so we can get... So uh, we can get... Uh, you know, your financial support. Yeah, we'll do that. I was telling the owner about, like, how much of an issue this was. Like, what problems are you having with me on the server? It's like, well, the mods are saying that they had a problem with the attitude. It's like, okay, what part of my attitude? Who... Apparently, I encourage people to break the rules. That's what I do. I say and do things to force people. Yes, the owner of the... Yes, the person did say that I force people to break the rules, and I report them when they break the rules. That I force them to do that. I don't know how I force people to break the rules, but apparently I force people to break rules, and then I report them. And it's like, no, I don't force people to break any rules. People just decide that... Like, I don't think I'd even report that many people on the entire time I was on that server. I might have reported one or two people at most. But apparently I force people to break rules all the time and then I report them. It's like, I'm not sure if it's the same server, but I think it's the same server. There was an issue with some random person who said that Magic the Gathering art should be like, you know, topless women. And someone else had been arguing with them for a while and I come in it's like, no, it... No, they're not going to put topless women in the art of magic cards. Children play this game. Like, there's no point arguing about it. So I get in trouble because I did immediately uh, call a mod for it. The other person who's arguing with them didn't get in trouble. I got in trouble because I was one-on-one -on -one arguing with the person instead of just calling a mod. It wasn't one-on-one. -on -one. They were already arguing with someone else. I don't know if the other person got banned from it, but I got in trouble for that at some point. It's like, did I force the person to break the rules preemptively because he was already calling for this and arguing with someone about it for hours before I stepped in. Yeah, this person was arguing about it for hours and somehow the other person that they were arguing with not calling the mods, that was completely fine. They're not supposed to call the mods. The mods themselves didn't notice anything going on for hours. It's only after I stepped in that I should have called the mods. Because of reasons. I don't know. And yet I got in trouble for forcing that. Because apparently I forced that person to break the rules and I reported them. I didn't force them or encourage them or anything to break any sort of rules. And I didn't report them. I got in trouble for not reporting them. But again, it might have been a different server. I don't know. There's been a lot of terrible magic servers I've been on. Now I'm on this one where apparently the host is like sexist or something i don't know all i know about him is that whenever i play a game with him he's always like drunk or high or something so it's a pretty boring experience 
which is weird because he has like a YouTube channel where you know they play games and it's like somewhat entertaining and stuff. But whenever I have played a game with him, I want to say in person, but whenever I have played a game with him or you know seen him in a game that wasn't one of the episodes, it's been boring. <laughs> Like, he has a win on board. Like, he has, I don't know, an infinite combo or something on the board. And he'll still take, like, ten minutes to do his turn, and I just go, Hey, just do this, and you win the game. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna play, uh, this card, I think? Wait, what does this card do? I'll play this card? Wait, what does it do again? It beats the card. For... Assuming that he read the card in his hand, tried to play it, read it again, put it out, and then went, oh wait, what does it do? <laughs> he reads the card again. No, actually, I'm gonna play, um, and he pulls out a card to read it. This card. Oh wait, that wasn't the card I wanted. <laughs> it's like, dude, you already have to win on the board. You don't have to waste time with it. You can just, like, show the combo and then say you win, and we'll decide if we have something to stop you. Turns out, no one had anything to stop him, so he just won the game. But he decided to spend a couple... Like, I... wasn't that he just didn't see the combo, because he probably did at first. Sometimes you don't see the combo. But I show him the combo, it's like, oh yeah, you have this card and this card out. I was like, hey, you have these three cards out, those combo and will just win you the game. And he's like, oh yeah, they do! So he acknowledges that there is a combo that will win him the game. And then he chooses to not use it for a couple of minutes while he continues with his turn and he goes oh yeah that, and someone else points out hey you have these three cards don't you just win it's like oh yeah I guess I win it's like were you just like ignoring me because it's like oh yeah sorry I'm drunk drunk or high one of the two I don't remember so, that was like the first game I had with him, so it's a pretty poor experience on my account. But the game I had with the uh, other previous owner of the server, who steamrolled the entire game, got both of the other players to like play cards to support him, and I got to play basically nothing all game, because whatever I played that could impact the board got counterspelled by someone else. Here's a board of like 30 creatures out, I play a counterspell, and no, I play a board wipe, to, you know, kill all those 30 creatures, and someone else's go, well, I have one creature out, so I'm gonna counter that. But to make it worse, the person who countered it, I told them not to play that creature on their turn. It's like, hey, it's like, huh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's like, I'm like, hey, don't play that creature. He's like, oh, well, I already did, I already said I was gonna play it, so it's played anyway. There's nothing I can do about it. I already played it. It's like, I'm telling you, like, you don't, you don't have to play it. It's like, well, it's too late, I already played it, it's already out, I passed the turn, it's your turn, I, your, your turn, I play the screech, I pass the turn. So like, okay, my turn, on tap, board wipe. But I just played my commander! You, I just, I, it's like, well, I told you not to play it. Well, you told me too late, I, it was already in my hand, I'd already uh, said that I was gonna do it. It's like, I couldn't know you are going to do it before you did it. Oh, well, I already played it, I don't want to try to play it again. I don't have the merit to play it again, I don't want to try to play it again. So I'm gonna counter it and let the, uh... Let the owner of the server win the game. And there are people watching the game as well, and... Then after the... I got eliminated, because, you know... Owner server... Owner of the server's turn came up and went, Cool, I killed Claire. Specifically. So I'm out of the game, because I can do nothing about it. And then, like, people asked me, it's like, Hey, what happened in that game? And I tried to explain to him, it's like, Yeah, the owner of the server got, uh... You know... A lot of value, super fast, I, and nope, and like the other players didn't want to even try to slow him down, like I, blah blah blah, and then I just got banned from the server because no bad talking to the owner. He didn't try to talk about anything, nothing. I just got banned. Period. That was it. And it's like, it was a nice play to play with other people, but... God. Eventually that owner got like removed from the server, so I so those of us that he had banned were brought back in. Effectively no questions asked. The, the only question is, hey, you wanna come no back? Place. 
Um, yeah, it's nice going on there to play with other people most of the time. There was one hugely transphobic person I played with, but for it to a mod, and the mod said that she did stuff. I don't know for sure. Fresh loaf of bread. But anyway, yeah. For the most part, it's been nice playing with people. Just playing with the, uh, now it's just the one owner. Playing with him is always a drag, because he's like, you know, always busy with work. So he gets off work, drinks, and is tired, and then plays magic very poorly. So if I get in a game with him during his off time, it's not a very fun game. It's not exactly like his fault, oh, I mean, kind of, but it's not that playing with him is bad, it's playing with him when he's, you know, unable to pay attention to what's going on is bad. I should start my own, uh, magic playing thing. I can record tabletop games, I can re record spell table games. I should try recording some, uh, commander games at some point and just... Because some of those games are quite a lot of fun. You get, like, the right mesh of people. Like, I was once in a game that was, like, four hours, but it was, like, four hours of things constantly happening. Game state changing on a very rapid occurrence, and it could have been longer because I... But I didn't realize I actually did have a thing to stop someone's infinite combo. It was, like, a four-hour game, but stuff was always happening. As opposed to the four-hour game with that guy who bribed his way into being a mod... That was what could have been just like a one hour game, but the guy had to Wait. argue about everything. Oh my gosh! Had to argue about everything all the time, constantly. Woohoo! Okay, okay. Uh, this? What a way to end the episode, huh? Only took about half an hour to get a general Zorb. Okay, I have an idea for what I want to get. Um, oh my gosh, I don't have a thick stick. Okay, wait, wait. Where do I get this? Okay, what is this? Battle Sand and Calvocatic Legion. The Ghosty Ghost. I need to get one of those things so I can make this thing. Yeah, I should have used up my last one. I didn't realize how rare of an item it actually was. Okay, where are the ghosty ghosts? This one, right here. No, that's not what I need. Okay, wait, hold on a second. Um, where's this plate? It's gone. Wow, time. Okay. Alright, I guess uh, Athol's end, right? Alrighty, well. Until then, and just go through trying to find it. Ride on Derpy for a little while. Um.
Yeah, everyone had... Oh, God. It seems like with pretty much everyone, there's a thing where, like... That makes them, you know, a bad person in some method, way, shape, form, or regard, and I'm not immune to that. Everyone has negative traits, that's part of being human. Uh, but some people's negative traits are not so easy to overlook based on a person to person basis. And some people over are. Some people are willing to overlook anything, some people are willing to overlook. Nothing. It's like, I feel like I'm willing to overlook some things, but anything that I consider... I mean, that's just how it is, right? Whatever person considers important, they're not willing to overlook. Come on. Summon. Come on, do a summon. Hey, it's August. Yes. Oh my gosh, no. Ready to go? Well, I guess hey, I can always do this. But, like, yeah. I've left quite a few Discord servers because people in, you know, positions of power in them were not good people. I've been banned from quite a few Discord servers because the people in positions of power were not good people. And it's like, oh, well, I know this person yells at you uh, for things all the time, for things that aren't your fault, but you should just be friends with them anyway. It's like, why? So they can yell at me all the time? Like, no, I... I don't want to associate with someone who wants to yell at me all the time. Why would I want to associate with someone who wants to yell at me all the time? Well, you're not going to make friends any other way, so you might as well make friends with the people who are mean to you, because no one is going to be nice to you. It's like... Or I could just, I guess, if people are only ever going to be mean to me, I guess I just won't have friends then. Like, it seems kind of obvious. It's not like water, it would... Where it's like, oh, well, drink the slightly contaminated water because it's better than not having water at all. And you need the hydration to live anyway. It's like, hey, okay, maybe have a point when it comes to, like, water for that. When it comes to people, you could just, like, not have friends. Are we going on an adventure today? Okay, Fuka, you are adorable. It's like, why would I want to be friend- like- why would I want to be part of a server and try to get games in with people who just argue about things all the bloody time? Like, why would I want to, uh, like, say, play games with people? Like, why would I want to play Commander, a four-person game, free-for-all game, with somebody who specifically tries to kill me every single game we play? Like, that's just going to ruin the experience for me because they are killing me. It's going to be an experience for them because I have to, you know, put up... I have to use all my removal and kill and attacks and stuff on them so they don't kill me. It's going to potentially ruin the experience for the other two people. Because it's like, well, just wait for these two to finish and then it's just like a one-on-one -on -one game. And it's like... It ruins the experience for everyone involved if such a thing happens. Why would I want that to be the case? Let your worries be your strength. It's like, I already get enough games where I go, okay, turn one, land. And then people are all like, oh, we have to kill you. Okay, everybody kill Claire immediately. Like, I play enough games where I'm the arch enemy for doing sometimes as little as nothing. Oh, gosh. It sucks when I try to play a game with people who are friends with each other. Because, like, one person goes, like, land, solving, signet, combo piece, combo piece, combo piece. 30 power of creatures on the board, turn one. And someone goes, all right, John, that's awesome. Uh, oh, my turn one? Uh, kill target player, Claire. No, I want John to kill me with his creatures. 
He got all those creatures out turn one. He deserves to kill me. But I'll kill Claire so you don't try to stop him. It's like, well... It's like, yeah, no, that is definitively lame. And why would I want to... Why would I want to go, Oh, I'll get the three of you next time. Okay, let's play another game. Let's play another three-on-one game. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'll do better next time. So, oh, maybe I'll do better next time against the three of you when you all, you know, team up to try to kill me right off the bat. It's like... Well, I could just not do that. This isn't like the 1980s anymore. Um, you're not limited to just the people who live near you and the people you go to school with as your friends. Like, I can make, I can try to make friends with people all around the world. There are dozens of uh, Discord servers where people play EDH. Like, it's not just like, oh, well, you have this one server. And then you have like this server of dweebs, and like those are your only options. Like, no, I can I can go somewhere else. I can be fine. I can go somewhere else. I can be with other people. Welcome back. I've been waiting for you. It's like I don't have to put up with this. And that just feeds into the whole uh, abusive relationship stuff, right? Because people get told by the parents, oh, you're lucky, you're good at doing so-and-so or else nobody would like you and then the person thinks like well like this is what it's like this is what love is is people yelling at me so if someone says that they love me but they also yell at me and also hit me that means that they love me and nobody else is going to so i should put up with the first person who's willing to abuse me i mean like isn't that like the actual science of the matter like abusive parenting leads to people being willing to accept being in abusive relationships like I'm pretty sure that's a thing that I read about there thanks it's like yeah people really should learn their worth it's a shame that you know they can't be taught what they're worth because reasons no nope, that's still there Oh my gosh, how hard is it to get a stick? So, yeah. Who knows, maybe after this, uh, while I'm packing or after I finish packing or something, I'll go play some Commander. So, yeah. Go and, uh... Yeah, is this just going to be an extra long episode? It's going to go until I get the stick that I'm going to try to make that one tool, and that's going to end this. However long that takes. If that takes a whole extra hour, then I guess this will be a whole extra episode. All right, let's go. Who knows, we will edit this part so this is all just a speed up. Thanks for the lift. That sounds like something I'd do. Edit the grind, edit this grind. Waiting for the item to drop for my luck stat is terrible. Yeah, if luck was a stat you could actually grind in game. I would try to do that. Grind it up to 100% so everything drops at least something. And that's just random chance on what they drop. Up we go. 
Yeah, left turn. Right turn. Left turn. Right turn. Easy enough. Gosh, yeah, tomorrow I have to get up at bloody five in the morning. Yes. Oh, oh, right. I have to get up at like five a.m. to uh, do my upkeep stuff, then get on a bus, and then get going. Oh, that's right. Uh, tomorrow, as the time of the recording, August the fourth, three month anniversary. Woohoo! Which means I won't have to, uh, yeah, I only have to do my upkeeps twice a day instead of three times a day. Nice. There. there we go, got the stick. I'm good. Alright, let's go back. Let's go back, let's make the thing. Only took until August. Oh yeah, shout out to that time in one of my R4 playthroughs where on the first day of the month at like midnight-ish, I went to the tree to get like the August seed, planted it, and then on August 1st, it's had a full day of growth. Because plants check for growth at 6am, but things check for seasonal drops at midnight. Make a farm tool. Watch us be like 3,000 moon points still. Yay! Oh, that's right. I have to put a uh, magnifying glass in it, don't I? 5,000 attack. Last one's only 150. Also makes for an impressively powerful weapon. Speaking of an impressively powerful weapon, let's test this out! I don't know why. I just want to test this out. So yeah. Uh, hope you're all having fun and stuff. I'm about to have a nice, fun weekend at Animathon. Probably not going to do my recordings at Animathon like I uh, considered. Maybe one year I will. But not this time. Yeah, three attacks from this is equivalent to one attack from this. To be fair, if I put this with like light spirit whatever on dual blades, that would be pretty good. Alright, do I get something useful at least? Nah. 